So the aims of this workshop, we, we are part of something called the Leverhulme International Network. The Leverhulme Trust is a trust in the United Kingdom that is supporting this, this research project, which I'll tell you a bit more about in a minute, looking at urban sustainability indicators and frameworks and discussing policy and practitioner perspectives and experience. Um, there are seven of us in five different countries. We have had meetings with the, with the main team, but there's also local workshops in uh, the three in, in Vancouver, uh, also three in the UK, three in Germany, three in Korea, and three in China. Uh, so we are coming together. This project is wrapping up in June in London, and this workshop is directly feeding into that. Um, so what we're trying to do is get a global overview um, of essentially these kinds of assessment frameworks that uh, Gerben was just referring to. Um, so many of you are familiar with some of these. Very few people are familiar with all of these. Um, One Planet Communities, Brian, Star, Eco Districts, et cetera. You're going to hear a lot about those today in, in, in a very uh, abbreviated way. So we're looking at these, trying to see what, what's happening with this incredible fermentation in this area, uh, conceptualizing the role of governance, looking at practical experience, and considering future directions. Click. Um, the uh, network, as I said, is a multi-center uh, research initiative. Um, and we are uh, mapping and comparing these different frameworks and standards and certification schemes, analyzing the use of different frameworks in local contexts, and defining requirements for international eco-city standards. Click. So this is the, the team, or most of it. Um, we have uh, in the room Bill Reese, if you want to just raise your hand, from UBC, who's part of, part of the team, and myself. Rob Cowley, I don't know if you can hear us, but Rob is in London. He chaired the, the London workshop last week, or the week before, and he's on virtually. And, uh, and then these other folks at uh, Delft and Westminster and University College London and uh, Leibniz and, uh, and KAIST, the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology in Korea. Click. So what we're finding is uh, some key characteristics our whole system approach, which includes cross-sectoral indicators. So we're trying to, to not look only at green buildings or energy or carbon emissions. Or, or, or We're trying to, to look at the a whole uh, rounded view of sustainability, as Gerving was talking about, so sustainable living, quality of urban life, um, that we can apply at the urban level. So a lot of the, the work on sustainability indicators, as you're aware, has been at the global level, has been at the level of nation states, less at the level of, of communities. Uh, so our focus in, on governance is in terms of, of practice tools, design, implementation, and assessment, and ways that we can emphasize integration and coordination. And we're looking for, for replicability and scalability. Uh, you have so many wonderful, kind of unique uh, scenarios and, and tools, can we, can we transfer and can we replicate elements of these from one place to another? Click. Um, this is an interesting comment from our colleague uh, Hiroko Suzuki at the World Bank, who points out that the, the real value of, of these indicators is not so much the quantitative output, but to help policymakers and practitioners uh, really make sense of and think about a, a city's governance system. So it really does come down to Kirvin was just talking about, about self-assessment. Click. So the rationale is uh, a few things. Responding to rapid urbanization, and uh, the Lagos example was, was a good one. We are uh, approaching with the sustainable development goals being uh, adopted by the United Nations General Assembly this coming September. Uh, there will be, for the first time, an urban goal, or human settlements goal. And uh, one of the reasons for that is that we know that most of the growth and population of the planet will be in urban areas, uh, in developing countries, in areas that are not currently planned or settled in a formal way. Uh, so it's a, it's a very significant issue how those areas are developed. Um, there's growing recognition of, of urban sustainability as a global concern. And again, the, the very fact that the, the UN discourse is finally and I say finally because I've been working in this field for 25 years, but finally is, is recognizing that there's a, a local connection, there's, that, that sustainable communities are necessary for a sustainable planet is uh, 
in 2015, we're finally getting there. Um, facilitating shared practice and learning, and opening up market opportunities, and enhancing policy and knowledge transfer. We have, uh, in our team, identified 43 uh, frameworks globally, and uh, you can see some of the, the documents that we have sorted. Uh, what's interesting about these 43 frameworks is that 79% of them have been launched since 2008, um, which is really kind of stunning. Uh, so there's, there's tremendous fermentation, competition, uh, you know, interesting stuff happening. Um, and uh, this just tells you the, the, the years. Uh, next. <coughs> and there's a great diversity of actors involved. Um, and we have, uh, they range from, there's quite a, a number of these frameworks that come from social enterprises and NGOs, which I find kind of interesting. Some come from professional organizations, some from international organizations, some from national agencies, some from local authorities, and a couple from uh, technology and engineering firms. So quite, quite a range of actors. And one of the interesting questions is, with all this fermentation, uh, who's going to be here five years from now? Next. So some of the practice challenges that we're looking at are managing boundaries, uh, reconciling this, the scope of these frameworks with local planning, uh, multiple, multiple boundaries that we have to deal with, spatial, jurisdictional, temporal, and, uh, and negotiated boundaries, implications for com comparability and replicability. Another challenge is about engaging communities. Uh, a lot of this work is technical, um, but uh, there's often we, we really need to work with communities to get buy-in, for people to understand these things, and to, to, uh, to agree and to, to use them. Next. Uh, facilitating partnerships, critical relationships between the promoters of these frameworks and people who implement them locally, and the evolving role of the framework promoters, from co-developers to certifiers, uh, and the implementation, the implications there for transparency and for replicability. And, uh, and fourth, for assuring the assessment process of how do we translate framework principles into action plans, uh, capture and assess data and define it, and uh, have transparency uh, as the basis of an endorsement process. Next. So what, what we have done in this project is we've created these, these quadrants, these two axes, axes, so the horizontal axis going from innovation on the one side to standardization, and the vertical one going from global to local. And uh, we are going to, to try to use this as a framework in our, in our Lieberhulme project to synthesize all of these different uh, initiatives that we're going to talk about. So, very quickly, what do these mean? Click. So the upper left uh, quadrant we call globalizing innovating. So those are frameworks or tools that are applicable at different urban scales, promoted across global contexts, um, define underlying principles for indicator development, are not overly prescriptive, usually championed by an international <coughs> organization, and encourage international shared practice learning. The next one uh, is what we call globalizing standardizing. So these are usually accreditation frameworks with detailed minimum standards, a point-based assessment tool for the purposes of endorsement or certification led by an international organization and that encourage best practices uh, scaling up and competition. Third is what we call localizing innovating. So these are toolkits defining possible areas for local sustainable urban development. They outline a process for use by local actors. They tend to be championed by an NGO or to support local communities. And they're not so concerned with direct comparability. And then the fourth quadrant, which we call localizing standardizing, uh, is the certification schemes that enshrine common standards, where the means of implementation are a matter for local determination. Uh, Pre-existing local conditions are used to set baselines and a local organization acts as the framework champion for a given territory. So that's, that's a lot of theory and too many words, I know, in, in a few slides.